Hi everybody and welcome to Eurovision Winners A Closer Look. Before we start, I'd like to ask you, if you do like these videos, please subscribe to my channel. It's down here somewhere, the red button, it's called Abonnieren in German, I think. In Dutch it's called Abonnieren, something like that. But in English it's subscribe. It would help me out a great deal if you would do that, if you like these videos. Thank you very much for that. Also, I have another channel called Hayo Music, where you can see my own performances. Um, if you like those performances, you can go to that channel after you watch this video and subscribe there too, if you please. It would help me out a great deal, as I said. So thank you very much already in advance. But now, hide your children. Get under the covers to, covers to take refuge, because we're going to talk about Lordy and hard rock. Hallelujah! So what happened in 2006? I know Hillary Clinton has been asking herself the same question for four years now, but I want to know what happened in 2006. Why did Lordy win? Let's take a step back first. 1992, that's when Tomi Pateri Puthansu, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, worked on a solo project. From now on, I'll call Tomi Mr. Lordy. Something like that. Um, in that video, he did not wear a mask, but his friends who were in the subplot, if you want to call it that, they did wear masks made by Tommy, uh, Mr. Lordy, excuse me, by the way, and the costumes as well. It's scary stuff, by the way. If you find that video, don't watch it before you go to sleep because, ooh, you won't. Now, after he made that video, he thought, hey, a monster band, that could be cool. Of course, logical next step. Why not? So, Lordy was born. Due to a number of issues with record companies, you know how it goes. They could not release and record a new album until 2002. But once they did, whew, it was a huge hit. The first single was number one in Finland, was called Would You Love a Monster Man? To be quite honest, I think I would love anything that came my way right now. The accompanying album was also a huge hit called Get Heavy, which is something, of course, we've all been doing during this crisis. So right now, I'm not even sure if a monster man would love me, even if I did love a monster man. After Get Heavy, they released a lot of singles and albums, which became a huge success in Finland. And then, of course, the logical step was to move on to Eurovision. In 2006, we were in Athens, in Greece, because of Helena Paparizou's My Number One, which in 2005 was everybody's number one. Truth be told, it was not a very good contest, so you gotta pick a song, right? Lordy, at that time of Eurovision, consisted of the next members, and my monster finish is not that fluent, so correct me if I'm wrong here, okay? The aforementioned Mr. Lordy, Amen, Kita, Ox, and Ava. Wow. I've seen a lot of horror movies in my lifetime, but I don't think I'll be able to sleep for a week. And of course, the road to Eurovision for Lordi led through a semi-final and a big final in Finland, and they won, and yada, yada, yada. Eurovision favorites that year. There were a few. Wait a minute, it's on this page. Sweden was a big favorite. They sent Carola again. And if you don't know Carola, you're not a Eurovision fan, okay? I still love you, but you're not. Greece was a favorite. Bosnia and Herzegovina was an outsider, just as Finland were outsiders. And Russia had a nice ballad too. So why did it win? That's the big question, of course. Now, this is going to be the more serious part of the video, okay? But do not cancel on me, okay? I know cancel culture is big right now, but don't cancel on me because it's interesting. And we'll get back to the fun stuff later. So I was working on two theories because I remember how I felt when Lordy won in 2006. And trust me, it's not a good feeling that I had. Not as worse as 2016, but still not a lot better. So I thought the protest vote or authenticity played a big part. 
And I always thought it was a protest vote because back then there was a lot of rumbling and grumbling going on in Western European countries that Eastern Europe took over the contest and that Western European countries really couldn't win anymore, couldn't get through to the semi-final. They were actually, in hindsight, very sore losers because Eastern Europe sent their best songs, sent their best artists, because for them, after the fall of the Iron Curtain, it was prestige. They wanted to score big. And the Western European countries just went on doing what they always did, sent the Schlager and sent the song that was typical Eurovision. That didn't work anymore when Eastern Europe uh, appeared on the stage. And also, in those years even, there were more traditional Eurovision countries on the stage than there were non-traditional countries. And even in the final, there were more non uh, traditional Euro Eurovision countries participating than non-traditional Eurovision countries. So that argument really went nowhere. So I had to discard that theory very quickly, Qu more quickly or <laughs> more quickly than I wanted to. So then we come to the second point, authenticity. Lordi had always performed like this. This was not a gimmick created for Eurovision. This was who they were. So maybe they were more authentic than a woman crawling out of a piano, putting as much melodrama in a ballad as you possibly can, waving a huge flag and then never missing your spot on stage to look into the camera. We love you, Corolla. Don't worry. I wanted you to win that year. I'm sorry it didn't happen. But Lordy may well be the most authentic Eurovision winner we've ever had. <laughs> I'm okay. I never thought I'd say that. But I did get a renewed respect, well, a renewed first respect for Lordi when I watched their Eurovision performance again. Having said that, it was not good for the contest. Western European countries who had already been grumbling about Eastern European countries, they just thought now we can send stupid acts and silly songs, which gave rise to Dustin the Turkey. which is still a low point for Ireland, for the contest in general. This Muppet, puppet, doll, animal thing didn't make it through to the final, which is great. And that's the point, because many of these silly acts did not make it through to the final because they were not authentic. And that is what Lordy was. I think that's the main difference and the main takeaway from this video. Nevertheless, something good did come out of this because after the outpouring of dissatisfaction from Western European countries, the EBU decided that as of 2008, we would have televoting and juries combine the numbers and that would be the total vote for a country. Now, as far as Lord is concerned, they've gone strong ever since. They've been releasing albums worldwide. They've been touring worldwide. They are considered a very good heavy metal band. Which is to say that, in my opinion, it's more like 80s pop rock disguised as heavy metal, but still. So they're doing well. They released their latest album this year, 2020. The song, though, will always be a divisive one. Some people will say it should never have won. Other people would say, I'm glad it won. I hope that this theory that I put forward here in this video will help you to move on a little bit, because I know there are still fans that are hurting can't do it because I got a mic, you know, and then you'll hear it. It'll be weird. So the song will probably always be considered the odd one out when it comes to Eurovision winners. And I think that that is maybe exactly the way that Lordy would like it to be. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Once again, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more of my own performances, go to Hayo Music. And you can also subscribe over there if you like. Please do it. As I said, it would help me out a great deal. If you did, it would help me make the channel better. So, have a good day. Bye-bye.